Hey guys, I just finished watching Parasite. This is a Korean dark comedy that transitions into a, uh, I guess, serious drama slash slasher-like slash social commentary. And honestly, it's insane and it's awesome. I might even go as far, sorry, I am a little bit sick right now. Um, I might even go as far as saying this is probably the best movie I've ever seen personally. Um, just because, you know, I mostly focus on stuff like Hollywood blockbusters and superhero garbage. So this was definitely a touch higher than what I'm used to. Um, and I like that it wasn't pretentious. It wasn't overly complicated. It was just the right amount of artsy fartsy um, and just a really interesting story and narrative. And I was really into it start to finish. So Parasite is an absolute gem. Uh, it gets a 10 out of 10. I highly recommend you uh, go see it right now. If you have not seen it, then don't watch this review. I'm not going to spoil anything, but this is one of those films that, like, the less you know, the better. Um, it's, it's just, I guarantee you, it's a 10 out of 10 experience, regardless of what genres you're into. Don't be turned off by the fact that it's subtitled. If you're limiting yourself uh, because of the subtitles, you are missing out. You are severely missing out. Squid Game should have taught you that. Korea has great films and television to offer, so definitely do not skip out on them. Um, yeah, Parasite's insane. Now, you'll have to excuse me, I'm not going to be able to remember every single character's name, especially since their English names um, are not on the cast table. Like, they're not on the IMDb credits page. So, all I can really remember is Kevin and Jessica. I don't remember the rest of their names, and there's no way for me to find that out anymore, so... We're really going to just refer to them as the poor family and the rich family. So, Parasite is about literal humans becoming parasites, and they do this allusion to cockroaches and how they're basically just trying to survive. Um, I don't think the poor family is like, okay, yes, I get, yeah, they, okay, they are definitely morally in the wrong, but not once in this film was I against them. And that's a mark of, like, a really strong, um, film and its protagonists because they're doing, you know, objectively bad stuff. But I just, this is, this is one of those movies where it had like anti-hero characters that I just didn't feel like they, I did not like get angry at them ever. It's like, I totally understood their life situation. The movie does a very good job of setting up their backstory properly. We eventually get this, probably the best scene of the film, in my opinion, is when they, uh, their, their house, their, well, not even a house, their, semi-basement, they call it, uh, gets completely flooded and the toilets are just overflowing with sh shit. And uh, it's just insane. And she's like trying to get the smokes from the ceiling. It's such a cool movie. Um, everyone has to see this. This is a movie that like, I would feel so sorry for someone if they hadn't seen it. And I would not be surprised if a lot of people are going to skip out on this just because it is Korean and it is subtitled. So, and it's like its own IP as well. It's not like a franchise thing. It's its own little thing. Right? So, it's really, it's a shame. Um, now, of course, this is, I believe, this won um, basically the most amount of awards of any movie in 2019. So, it is getting the recognition it deserves. But it's just sad to see that, um, I believe this movie is designed for Western audiences, even though it is Korean. Um, but uh, I could be wrong about that. Don't quote me if I'm wrong. But um, it's just a shame that a lot of Western people won't see this. So, Parasite. Um, it's... Its strengths are very, very obvious, okay? The acting is awesome. Every single character has a purpose. For the most part, we might talk about that more later. No, we will. Um, I do feel there's a little bit... There are two red herrings in there um, that I wasn't a huge fan of, but otherwise, I like, even those two, I felt every single character from minor to major is sharing the screen time perfectly. Nobody's cutting each other out or trying to steal the show. Literally every single one of these actors is like on the exact same playing table as each other and they all give great performances that are very memorable and uh, they just each play their characters and roles so, so well. Um, yeah, so acting's great. Characters are great. Love the story. This is one of the weirdest uh, but most clever and interesting narratives for a game in a long time. This reminds me of a YouTube video I kept getting recommended uh, called uh, Rust Parasites. It was like a Rust compilation, which is a video game of people living under other people's bases for long periods of time. Uh, that's the same thing here. 
So I barely even got into the plot, did I? I probably got myself off. So basically, a, um, a poor family is able to get their foot in the door by forging their document and they have a friend and this guy is able to, Kevin, is able to um, <clears throat> uh, basically be the tutor of this girl. And one of the weirder things in the movie is that there's this, there's this age gap relationship between them. And um, the, the student doesn't turn in the teacher for being clueless because she's come, she becomes quite infatuated with him. Probably because she lives a very private, uh, closeted, isolated life. And that's like the first man in her life, I guess. So, yeah, and then um, this, this Kevin, he is able to slowly fire and get rid of all the existing staff of this rich family's uh, house staff team and replace it with their family members, but he doesn't tell them their family. He's just like, oh, here's a referral to another professional, here's a company I got offered. And then eventually the entire family starts working for this family, and they're just, you know, they're, again, yes, they're morally wrong, but also they're not, because... Their, their living situation is awful. Like, one of the worst living situations I've ever seen in a movie. Um, so, no, probably the single worst living situation. Unless you're like a, you know, a starving kid in Africa. This is basically as, as worse, as, as bad as it gets. So, um, that's why their actions are so justified, despite them not being. <laughs> like, none of, that, none of what they did would hold up in, like, court of law, but, like, morally... You know, maybe it's not so bad. I mean, they're just trying to get out of the dirt. So, yeah, very powerful movie. It has lots of uh, themes and uh, social commentary about, you know, the privileged and societal classes and all that. They make this point about the, the, the poor family's distinct smell about them and um, just really, really cool movie. Um, so, also, cinematography is better than it needs to be. Like, it did not need to be that good. I'm obsessed with movies that change up the weather. So we got tons of rain, thunder, and snowy blizzards, and tsunamis, kind of, and just, it, there's, well, not tsunamis, but like floods, right? So this movie, it really feels like an adventure, and you're just dying to know what happens by the end of it. So, yeah, I could go on and on, but let's hop into my um, very small criticism section. Um, yes, this movie gets a 10 out of 10, and yes, I do think it's the best movie I've ever seen, personally. Uh, like, I'm trying to think the next runner-up would be, like, Shawshank Redemption or The Dark Knight, but I think I prefer Parasite over those two, but it is very close. So, my small criticisms are going to be, first of all, uh, the sex scene is very random and, uh, weird. I was watching this with my parents. And since this movie, definitely every single scene exists for a purpose. Um, but that scene, maybe, it was just to like... So the first half of the movie is like a dark comedy, and the second half is like a horror slasher. So it's like some of the comedy bits got leaked into the second half of the film. Um, and that's one of those like comedy scenes, but it's not actually funny. It's, you know, he's licking his finger and putting on his wife's nipple, and she's like, oh, go, go clockwise. And I'm like... I'm sitting right here with my, my two parents in the same room as me. It's one of the weirder sex scenes I've seen in a movie, to say the least. So, yeah, it didn't actually, that scene did not serve any purpose. Uh, the movie was already really funny, so if that was, was a joke attempt, it wasn't needed anyway. Obviously, it wasn't funny, though. It was just kind of a weird, cringe scene. Probably, yeah, definitely the weirdest scene in the movie. Um, also, the, so the age gap relationship, not sure what the, the point there was. So I would also kind of dock that as well. I'd say, you know what, a little bit weird. I mean, not one, but two age gap relationships. Maybe it's just Korean culture. I have no idea. I'm not educated on that. But like, it would be weird for me to like, like I'm 23. It would be very weird for me to like scout out a 16 year old in high school and be like, okay, I'm going to marry her once she enters college. And then have my family be like, yeah, you're the man. Maybe it's just like a culture difference. I have no idea, but... That was weird as well. And uh, the last criticism I want to give is um, while the movie definitely pays off and is absolutely worth your time, and it does, for the most part, come together really, really nicely, and I do like the ending, um, I felt maybe some of the subplots didn't tie in as well as they could have. And to me, at least, while it's already a really expectation-subverting film, I think it um, didn't need to go the red herring route. Uh, so I felt that both children of the rich family were both 
kind of red herrings and not your typical red herring where it's like, okay, they did it. You know, they're not doing anything. It's just, they're just kind of like a weird background, uh, background knowledge to keep in the back of your mind and you think it's kind of going to play in. So I, I remember I wrote down what I thought the, okay, so yeah, how it loosely ties in and this isn't strong enough, which is why I criticize it. Um, so the young daughter who's being tutored, uh, her subplot with the whole Kevin obsession, that's supposed to tie in by basically being a, a means to get his foot in the door, his family's foot in the door. Um, but for the rest of the film, her obsession and like the little age gap relationship thing, I just didn't really get it. Um, you know, this is obviously a movie that has a lot to say and a lot to do, but I, there, I don't think there's any deep meaning to that. I think it was just kind of a throwaway means to get them in the door. Um, and also the kid. So the kids lose connection, his little subplot about being annoying and being an art, an art guru and like art therapy and all that. Um, his tie-in was very loose. It was just to show us that Morse code is going to be important at some point. That's really it. But he also felt like a red herring and just like, what's going on with this kid? Why is he so prevalent and eccentric? And ultimately, it's not really for a reason. It's just kind of a red herring. So yeah, don't get me wrong. Those are really, really nitpicking. Whenever I see these kind of hugely praised movies, I always go into them thinking, okay, I want to find at least one flaw in it. Um, so that's usually how I approach these kind of things. But Parasite still gets a 10 out of 10 and still most likely, no, yeah, it is definitely the number one movie I've ever seen. I hope to top it one day because I feel like this could be topped and I feel like it could be topped by the same director. Just bring the same talent and execution that was already here, put some more quirky stories, make things go even crazier, but make it even more cohesive at the same time and make sense. And, uh, we'll just keep getting higher quality movies like this. So, Parasite, a must watch for everyone.